Hi, I'm Rydian, and in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to expose structures for your uh, users or you to mess with manually. Now, previously following the tutorials, especially if you've only been following the video tutorials and not the text tutorials, because the text tutorials go much more in depth and cover more topics, you would um, simply be making separate scripts for each type of effect you wanted. For example, if you wanted infinite HP, you'd write a script for that. If you wanted infinite MP, you'd write a script for that. If you wanted something to uh, modify your stats, you'd write a script to check per stat. Well, we can avoid all of that work by simply exposing the structure and having the stats show up in the table for the user to freeze and, you know, uh, modify manually. You may be thinking, well, yes, that's what people would like to do, but that wouldn't survive. Obviously, if I were to just scan for the values and save them in the table, the addresses would be different next time the game runs, which is true. So we're going to combine the methods. We're going to use a script that finds the addresses and updates them in the table for us. So we have one script that exposes multiple val- Hi. Hi, kitty. Yes? That exposes multiple values for us. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find something that's in the structure. We're just going to assume here that the player's health and MP and stuff like that are in the player structure. So currently the health is 287. 287. Uh, I know it is a floating... Po it's okay. It's okay. I know it's a floating point value. All right. So let's wait for it to change. Let's see her get hurt. All right. 285, 280, whoops, help if I was typing it, 285, next scan. All right, so we've got three addresses here. Now, what we could do is try to um, add the, we could try to filter it out more, or we could try to add these addresses to the list and modify them to see which one is real. Um, you can use a bit of an educated guess for this. Currently, we're looking for a part of the player, part of the player stats, health, which is very integral to gameplay. This is not something that's going to be loaded and unloaded within a level. Chances are it's going to be one of the first things that the level deals with. So we assume it's going to be the lower address. So I'm just going to assume it's this one. Let's edit it to 100, and it immediately changed. Let's get hurt. It's okay. Changed to 99. All right. So we can just assume that that's right. So now that we have this, let's find code that writes it. Find what writes this address. Yes, it has to be debugger. All right, so let's get hurt. All right, now we have some code that writes it. Let's get hit a few more times. All right, that looks good. So let's just stop this logging, because that's all we needed. It's the only thing that showed up. All right, well, here we have code that would um, write the player's new health when hurt. But this code is not going to be suitable for us. So let's say that I was to go along with it and go the full mile and make a script to edit it. So I'll go open the auto simple thing, AOB injection. Let's say, write new health. Whoops. Hope I typed it properly. Hit OK. All right, so let's just say, let's just skip all this and I'll just show you why it's not going to work. So, MO move into the health value. Ooh, recognize that. All right, so let's say we have this script set up to override the player's health with 9999 each time it's modified. So we'll just call it infinite health. All right, so let's say we check this script and we wait, cat please. All right. Well, I'm getting hurt, but my health is refilled each time because the script is uh, setting it to, you know, really high value and the um, game is just clamping it to the max. All right. Well, this looks good, right? Well, problem is it makes the enemies invincible, too. This is because I didn't bother to check beforehand whether this worked for everything or just the player. So if I turn it off... I can kill these enemies successfully. All right, so how would I check that beforehand? You can right click it and choose find what addresses this instruction accesses. And as that address is, sorry, as that function writes addresses, they'll show up in this list here. So as I get hit, it shows my address there. And as I hit the enemy, it shows their address there, including the uh, little barrier thing. All right, 
So let's change the display to float. Yeah, it's okay, come on. And we can see there that this modifies enemy health too, so this, this isn't useful for us. Because if we were to write an invincibility code with it, it would, you know, as you saw, make the enemies invincible. And if we were to use it to find the player's stats and stuff in the player structure, like HP and MP, it would be swapping around between the players and the enemies, and that's not all we want. We want just the player stats. So how do we do that? Well, we need to figure out what the difference is between enemies and players, or at least one usable difference. So enemies, when we point at them, whoa, 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 is that like it's unique or something? Whoa, I am still like in the tutorial level. Why did he show up there? Ask for it. <laughs> See if I can take him. Oh, okay. I guess it's just a level one unique. Hey, golden key. All right, so enemies have a health bar when pointed at. Um, what enemies do not have is this UI health bar thing. You know, like right here, it's reading our health to write it in the UI. It doesn't do that for enemies. Enemies have a different type of health bar. So it looks like this is unique to the player because it's not showing up for the pet or anything. And if I had other people in the game, their stats would show up differently as well. They'd show up in their own interface. So if our health is being written there and it being it's being turned both into a percentage of the globe and also written numerically, it must be read. So let's delete this script, right click, find what accesses this address, because it's got to be reading it. Well, multiple lines of code, they are already reading it. If I were to unpause, kill this dude, get hurt a bit, can't, come on. Well, we can see there that a lot of thing reads the hell. Well, let's focus on these first ones, because they showed up while nothing was going on in game, but the UI was still being drawn, so let's hope that that's it. So we click this first one, show disassembler. All right, now instead of bothering to write a script and see if it works or not, we will simply right click, find what addresses this instruction accesses. And I could change the value, the display type and like read the values and see the count, but we're not concerned with any of that right now. We only need to see if it's just the player address or not. All right, so right now, so far it's read just the player address. Well, nope. I hit an enemy and now it's reading that. So that code is not, not usable for this method. So we will try the next one. Let's see, addresses instruction accesses and already it's reading two different ones. Nope. All right, what about this one? Find what addresses instruction accesses. All right, so I've pointed out a few enemies, I've hit a few and I've been hit. And so far it only seems to be uh, working off of this one, which is the player hell. So I, I'm, I think I'm safe to assume that this only works on the player's health. So what we want to do is figure out how to get this to copy the base address to the table. So first of all, this must know the base address because it's obviously modifying the health address. How is it referencing it? Well, it's refer referencing it as register ESI. Again, you can think of a register as a really, really simplistic type of variable in memory, plus offset 560. So logically, this health address, which I never bothered to label, whoops, this health address right here, minus 560 would be the base address. Well, it looks like this game actually set it up so that the um, player structure starts at 0, 0, 0, 0, which makes any sort of visible math we have to do very easy. Generally, you can't count on games to do that. Anyways, so obviously the base address of the player structure must be held in register ESI at this point. How do we see what's in register ESI at this point? Well, what we're going to do is set a breakpoint. So we go to debug and toggle breakpoint. And so next time that this code is executed, the game will break and Cheat Engine will grab more info from it. So we toggle breakpoint, and since that code runs all the time, the game immediately, you know, was told to break. So you can see here it is unresponsive. In fact, Windows thinks that it hung because technically it did hang up. <laughs> all right. So you can see we also have more info. So to prevent the game from crashing, we're going to go to toggle breakpoint again to turn it off, and then choose run in the debug menu. If you have the F5 and F9 hotkeys memorized. It's very easy to just go uh, F5 to see it, F5 again, and then F9 to resume. Wait, wait, that was F8, my bad. 
I need to resume. All right. So anyways, the additional info popped up is um, various parameters here, but what we're interested in is this, the registers. So let's do it again. All right. So at the point this, at the time this is executed, we are looking for the value of ESI. Register ESI says this, 0E390000, so that must be the base address, all right. So that's the base address at the time this runs. So whenever this code runs, it knows what the current base address of the player is, all right. So let's make a script to make it copy that out. It'll be injection, let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna name it read HP. All right, let's see. Um, find code that reads just the player's health, assuming for the UI. Uh, hook that code and insert a copy of the base address for our use. All right. So in order to copy the base address in the easiest manner for our use, we are going to allocate some new memory to copy the base address to. So every time that the script is toggled on, it will allocate this memory. So we could allocate some memory and then like, you know, set a um, register a symbol for it and all that jazz, but we're going to do it with one line. Global alloc, which you know will also make it available for use in other scripts if you wanted to have a child script that worked off of this. So global alloc takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the um, symbol. I'm going to name it player base. Um, the underscore is not needed. It is just a personal naming convention I use that I picked up from somebody else of having the underscore for the exposed bits in the table. So the second argument is the number of bytes to allocate, number of bytes to make usable. In this case, we only need four bytes. This is because Torchlight 2 is a 32-bit program, and thus memory addresses are only going to be 32 bits or four bytes in size. If you're dealing with a 64-bit program, and it's going to be, you know, whatever, you'll deal with that yourself. Let's see. Allocate four bytes for the base address. All right. Now we need to actually tell it to copy to that. So we want to move into the player base that we allocated, ESI. All right, copy the base address. All right, so this moves the contents of register ESI, which is this number or this address, into player base into the memory at player base. All right, so now file, sign to current sheet table, close this, and let's name it find player base. All right, so this isn't actually gonna do anything. It's gonna find the player base, but nothing we have actually uses the player base. So we go to add address manually, and we know from looking at this that health is at offset 560, and we know that health is a float. So player base plus 560, name it HP, and it is a float. So this kind of address scheme actually works. You may have seen something sort of like it if you've dealt with pointers in the past, but this kind of thing works as well. In fact, you can actually, if the game is using like multiple levels of structures and you've got pointers from one place to another, you can actually make a script to find like the base pointer and then everything else can work off of that. Here, we are only looking for one structure. We're not gonna be dealing with any pointers off that structure. So we add it. All right, and it looks like jack crap. There's nothing there. It's at zero plus 560, which is not usable. The value is question, question, because it's either something it can't interpret or is not even allocated. Well, that's because we haven't run the script. So we check the script and it modifies this code, which is pretty much always running. Boop. Now we can see it updated. Snowing delete this version. So now we finally have something usable. So we have written a single script, which honestly, you just take the template and you add these two lines to it, and then you make the entries here. So now every time we load this table, we check find player base, and the value for HP will fill out. It will find the current address that HP is at and have in the table where we can freeze it. And it affects just our HP because it's freezing just the address. Really? Can't I destroy? Let's see. So you can see here my 
dress is frozen, whereas I can still kill enemies. Alright, that's nice. Now, that's a lot of work for just, you know, one value. Well, anything else that's in the structure we can expose as well. So, 52 mana. 52, I'm just assuming it's float as well. Alright. We. Alright. Now I'm at 41. One, next scan. Alright, there we go. That's 0584, so I can actually just copy paste this and modify it. 560584. Oh, Again, this math is really simple because it ends, the address is allocated at 0000, zero, zero, zero the base, the structure. Alright, there we go. Alright, so we can see that it found my MP as well. So now this script will fill out the HP and the MP. So we can control two values with only one script finding them. So let's lock the MP. We can see that it is indeed frozen, at least as far as cheat engine is concerned. Well, we can find other stats as well. Character screen, we have 17 strength, so let's try searching for 17 strength. 17. It's going to be a bite because I'm pretty sure these stats don't have them. <laughs> don't have like little percentage points on them. All right. Well, hmm. There's a lot of 17. Do I have anything that modifies my strength? Um, I do not. Hmm. Well, if I can't change my strength to modify it, how can I find out where the address is? Well, the address is likely going to be in the structure. So that's 0E39. So we can actually just scroll down here. Do, 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 do. Almost had it. Nope. Almost. Nope. Nope. Uh, uh, come on. Well, this isn't working. This is taking a while. So let's tell it where to look. So since the player base address is 0E390000, we can assume that stats will be starting at that in after. So in the memory scan option, the start and stop tells it the range to scan in. So 0E390000, so it won't scan anything above that address or before that. So we scan that. There we go. That's what we want. Let's see, 0584, 0578, so that, that looks like it might be it. 0578, that's uh, not a float. 4 byte, let's see, str. Well, there we go. So now the script looks like it's finding our strength as well. We should probably check that. 17, 999, 999, yep. 9999. Yep, definitely looks like that's strength properly. Alright, so now we have this one script that finds our HP, our MP, and our strength. So, remember how earlier before I checked this, whoops, before I checked this, the um, HP didn't fill out, it was question marks? Well, while I'm sitting here reordering things, if you drag something into another thing, it makes it a child of it. So you can have parent-child relationships. So this is a good way to organize scripts, but you can do more. If you right-click the parent script, there's a group config. Hide children when deactivated. Boop. So when the script is not active, the other bits don't show up. So the player won't see a bunch of empty broken values here until they check player base, and if the script executes correctly, it will expand, and we will see this. So this is a way to make the table more functional, cleaner, neater, and you don't have a bunch of values that you're not currently using cluttering up the display. So now we simply have one script, which when run will find our HP, MP, and strength whenever we restart. So we can modify these values as needed, and we can freeze them all individually without having to write and update a bunch of scripts. Uh, you can find all sorts of stats depending on the game, so there you go. There's another tool in your box.